So, what we're going to talk about, and this is going to be a very, very short 25-minute overview on genes and diet. And, I want to, and I'm going to just highlight a few little things as we go, th go through. But one of the things that we know is that genes regulate metabolism and health status as well as disease resistance. And this has been known way, 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 way back to the time of Hippocrates. Okay? Uh, he didn't know about genes, etc., but he knew that there was this link between primary constitution and foods, and that that tended to set the state for people to either become ill or to remain healthy. Nowadays we know a little bit more about this, so there are a lot, a, a lot more scientific about it, but basically it's still the same problem of the genotype versus the nutrient status and lifestyle factors, and how those come together, how they interact to then form the particular phenotype, which is what we see in our clinics. Now, nutrigenomics is the study of genes and how they interact with nutrition and vice versa. So we know that genetic polymorphisms affect the metabolic nutrient requirements. We know that diet and nutrient intake affects gene expression. And that's probably the area that I want to really highlight more with you today rather than individual genotype testing. But to realise that what the person eats affects their genetic expression. And I think that's something that as doctors we tend not to, not to pay very much attention to, mostly because most doctors don't know very much about nutrition. Now, the basic nutrigenomic ten tenets are that dietary and environmental chemicals can affect the genome, altering gene expression and structure. Also, that diet can be a serious risk factor for a variety of diseases by altering gene expression. And we all know that. Diet can kill, using Michael's analogy with the hormones. <laughs> okay? Diets regulate the, they affect, sorry, diet regulated genes affect the onset, incidence, progression and severity of chronic disease and they influence the health disease balance which is dependent of course on the individual genotype. And to make a sensible, rational and effective interventions on a dietary or nutritional level one needs to understand that what you're doing can and will affect genetic status and genetic expression. We know from the dim, dark recesses of our minds as we learned way back in medical school that there are these single gene defects. You're all sort of vaguely familiar with some of these, aren't you? Things like phenylketonuria, homocystinuria, thalassemia, maple syrup, etc. Okay? These are single gene mutations and they impose upon the system very, very strict and very, very rigid nutritional requirements. And you can look those up in the textbooks. We also know that there are multiple uh, oops, there are multiple genes, over a thousand disease phenotypes that are related to single nuclear polymorphisms. And we know that about 30% of those are directly, uh, directly impose a nutrient requirement upon that organism. And these nutrient requirements uh, the very common nutrients that we know of, the vitamin B complex, vitamin E, vitamin D, carnitine, SAME, etc. <coughs> and what we need to be able to do is to work with these and to learn how to, how to work with these things. However, the vast majority of the disease that you're going to see in your clinic is multigenic disease. The heart disease, the diabetes, the hypertension, the osteoporosis, these are all multigenic disorders. Even within these multigenic disorders, certain single polymorphisms may exert a very pronounced influence. How many people here put all their hypertensive patients on low salt diets? Nobody. 
That's very bad medicine. You don't put your patients on low-salt diets just as well. <laughs> Only about 20% of patients who are put onto a low-salt diet will actually respond. In the majority, 60% of patients, nothing, it won't make any difference either way to their hypertension. And in 20% of the patients who have a particular type of polymorphism, what we're going to find is you're going to make their hypertension worse. And, you, and this applies not just to this particular uh, gene, but to a variety of genes that all impact upon, um, that impact upon um, hyper, uh, salt retention and salt metabolism. Osteoporosis, the same thing. There are particular genes that involve the, uh, the particular polymorphisms that affect the VDR gene that means that you're going to be, need to be very aggressive in treating for osteoporosis. The same goes for homocystinemia and folic acid requirements. And there are actually four or five different enzymes involved in folic acid metabolism, as you saw from Michael's diagrams. And polymorphisms in anywhere along that cycle is going to have an impact and maybe that's where part of the problem comes with regard to high-dose folic acid. It's not so much whether it's oxidised or reduced, but whether or not it's impacting upon one of these polymorphic enzymes and pushing the folate into what's called the folic trap. Remember that from your biochemistry in med school? Yes? No? Oh. There's a little... I won't go into it, but there's a thing that there's a mechanism that sequesters the folic acid and makes it non-active. And that's called the folate trap or the methyl trap. Now, with heart disease, for instance, one of the commonest things that we need to be looking at clinically is measuring for polymorphisms of the ApoE4 gene. Because this frequency of this gene within the community varies. And remember that Australia is a multicultural community. We have people here who are Anglo-Saxon. We have people here who are Italian-Portuguese. We have people here who are Aboriginal. We have people here who are Thursday Islanders, etc., etc., etc. And what we find is that the incidence of this APOE gene varies. It varies within the Caucasian population from north to south and it varies outside of the non-Caucasian population. And, the re and this allelic variation, which occurs not just with this gene but with many other polymorphic genes, uh, is maintained due to population isolation, cultural and preferential mating behaviour. These are just some of the polymorphic genes that your system or that your patients may have. And you can see uh, that these are fairly significant percentages within the population. From one uh, homozygote for the wild type versus homozygous for the variant, this is angiotensin 1 converting enzyme which is one of the big genes involved in hypertension. And there's funny, there's a couple of polymorphisms there, one of which actually makes the hypertension worse when you t put the person on a low-salt diet. There's a lovely article that actually, well, we'll probably come across it, which actually is uh, written, uh, in two th published in 2008, which talks about how low-salt diet kills people. 